Greetings everybody, the doctor here. This video is going to conclude our series at looking at the career types on Star Trek Online. In this video, I'm going to talk about ships now and how they relate to each career. We'll go over all of that and then I'll summarize at the end a couple of things here that I just want to emphasize on, including customizable kits. I just want to show you guys where you can get some awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome customizable kits in this game from the Fleet Spire and even the Romulan Embassy. There are some great customizable kits available. I just want to show those to you so you know that those are there and emphasize on that a little bit more because that's really what's going to separate your character from somebody else's character in this game is going to be those customizable kits. And uh, then we'll just summarize in general on this whole thing. Okay, so first of all, a comment I made in the last video that's obviously not completely true is that escorts are the only way to get cannons. No, if I said that, I, I, that was a mistake. Can uh, Obviously, escorts are not the only type of ship that have cannons. There are some cruiser and science ships, specialized ships in this game that do allow you to run cannons, but uh, those are specialized ships. For the most part, cannons are native to escort. When you think escort, you think, okay, this can run cannons. And that's because every escort can run cannons. There's not one escort that cannot. There just happens to be some other specialized ships that also allow cannons that may not technically be escorts or tactical oriented. But that's kind of the uh, what, one thing we just wanted to clear up there. But also just to go over ships and how they connect to the careers. There are two types of players, I think, in this game when it comes to picking a starship based on your career. We're talking engineer, science, tactical. And that is the... <clears throat> excuse me. That is the purest type of starship player who likes to connect like to like. That means keeping a science ship on a science character, an escort on a tactical character, or a cruiser on an engineering character. Those purists out there feel that that is just the best setup and works the best. I actually probably fall more into that category as a Star Trek Online player. I just think that things work out best. I'll explain why I feel that way, but obviously that is not necessarily how you have to play it. Any ship, and I need to emphasize, any ship can work on any career. This game is not limited. This game does not limit you to the type of ship, to the type of career. There are other games out there that might do that. This is not one of them. There is complete freedom in how you want to design your character and starship. You can be a science character and fly a cruiser just fine. You can be a science character and fly an escort. You can be a tactical character and fly a cruiser or a science vessel. And you can be an engineer and fly an escort or a science ship. So you are not limited. It's just that I personally feel, my personal belief from experience in this game, is that con connecting like to like, putting those ships to the career that seems that it would match the most, seems to fit it best, mainly for the one reason that those ships have a commander engineering, or excuse me, a commander bridge officer station that connects to that specific career. For example, science ships have a commander science bridge officer station. So it just makes sense to me if you're going to fly a science ship, you would want to fly it on a science character where you would benefit from that, that, that commander bridge officer station the best. Now you could still have that science ship of course on an engineer or a tactical officer, but the problem is yeah, you may have a bridge officer that gives you that commander science ability, but I, I think that you're just going to have more, I think it's just better. I mean, I really can't explain it. It's not really, there's really no, I mean, maybe not even any logic to it. I just think it fits better. It gives you more customizability, I guess is the word, when you're using that type of ship to that type of character. But you don't have to. 
So, you know, there's two different ways you can do that. You can decide what ships you want to fly with what careers. I recommend trying all of them, because then you can't lose. Then you can decide which one you like best on your character. You know, that's really the best way to do it, is just try all of them. Don't feel like you have to um, stay with one type of ship. You know, as you're leveling up in the game, you may choose a cruiser at level 10, but then level 20, maybe you want to change to an escort. You know, go for it. Try it. See what happens. And uh, in that way, you can just determine, you know, what ship's going to work best for you. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about your fun and entertainment in this game and what you're going to get out of it. Just don't feel like you need to be locked down to a specific type. But um, if you if you wanted to, that's okay too. Really, you can play this game any way you want. What I want to show you, though, are the ships available uh, on each career type. So we're going to go to Starship Shuttle Requisitions, get a new Starship, browse, and we're going to go over the different types of ships here. So we will start with, we'll just leave all the ranks visible so we can look at all the ranks. And what we'll do is we'll cut it down, we'll start with science vessels. Let's look specifically at what science vessels are available in this game. We'll start with uh, Lieutenant. So when you first start this game, if you want to, you know, have a science vessel, it's going to be this little light sight. Excuse me, this little light science vessel right here. You know, honestly, this is not going to be a long-term ship or something you, you're going to want to stick with. It it's evenly matched in the bridge officer stations, which I find interesting. It's got one ensign tactical, one ensign engineering, one ensign science. So I mean, you can equally have a tactical engineering and science bridge officer on this ship but obviously this is just a starter ship right this is not something you want to stick with however there may be I think there's a refit of this ship let me just make sure yeah there's the Oberth light science vessel no that's the Oberth that's different isn't it or isn't that hmm light science vessel light science vessel I guess it's maybe a little bit better. But anyway, yeah, that's going to be the science ship you start with. Go to Lieutenant Commander, then we have our Nova and Rhode Island. And uh, I got to say, okay, this is the Z Store version. So this is the one that comes with in the game. You have this Nova class science vessel. And uh, this, is where, this is where a science ship in the game starts really separating itself from the other ships is that Lieutenant Commander because now you have a lieutenant science station and an ensign science station and then one tactical one engineering so you can see definitely built for being you know a better science ship there for sure so that's why I think you know if you're gonna be a science character you may want to go down that path but you don't have to uh, then there is a Z store version the Rhode Island refit basically and it look what it gives you it gives you two lieutenant science stations so if you're able to afford a Z-Store Z ship at Lieutenant Commander, uh, you could have a really nice science vessel. I've always liked the look of this ship. This is a very cool looking ship. But definitely you can see how this starts to get more heavy on the science now. At uh, Commander, we have the Research Science Vessel. May look a little funky, but I kind of like the, which one is what I like, Horizon view on it there. It's kind of like a glass bubble or whatever. This is one that I flew in the game when I first started. I went down the science ship route, and this is what I started with. And uh, you know what? This was not a bad ship. It was at first for me because I didn't know what I was doing. But I did another playthrough of a, or started another character where I did do science ships, and I was actually able to make a really good horizon based ship here. As you can see, definitely now we're at Lieutenant Commander Science Station and an ensign science station real heavy on the science come to the um, advanced research vessel you can also purchase here um, this is going to be though a Z store ship the nebula basically very kind of funky looking I've always thought um, but it does have a universal station so you could have even more science lieutenant commander science and uh, ensign science there but uh, yeah, as you're leveling up through this, these are the science ships. I'm just basically the whole goal of this is just to show you guys what ships here are available as you level up. Captain, now we come to the Voyager, and this is one that, or the Intrepid class. This is the one that I flew, 
And now we're up to our full commander science station, and that becomes available at Captain. So that lets you put those tier 3 abilities on your ship, like Gravity Well 3 and so forth. So this is where it really becomes fun in the game, is when you have this Captain level ship, because you can really have a powerful science ship, finally. And of course, the, uh, there's also the refit version, which I think they did a great job on the visuals. The Z Store version here, and it provides basically, it looks like it provides one more engineering. So it gives you an instant engineering to make it a little more buffy, which is nice. But uh, still the same commander and lieutenant science between them. And then we come to Rear Admiral lower half, and we get a bunch of ships actually. We have a reconnaissance science vessel. I did not fly this one. To, I don't think I flew this one at all, actually. I might not have actually used this one. It has a commander science and a lieutenant commander science, so very heavy on the science. Um, but it also is a little balanced with the tactical there because it has a lieutenant tactical and an instant tactical, but very, very small on the engineering side. So you see, if you're an engineering character and you're flying this ship, to me it just doesn't make much sense because look how much engineering bridge officer space you have just none and only two engineering consoles whereas this thing has like four science consoles really built for science deep space science vessel I th flew this one for sure I flew this one a lot and uh, the reason why here is because it was a little heavier on the engineering which gave me another option um, I went with that commander science station lieutenant commander science station kind of weird looking with this little deflector part down here that I don't like but I think you can remove that in the visuals at least I I did on mine in the Z store version again you have advanced research vessel um, this is the retrofit here nebula commander science but then weirdly only an ensign science but then I guess it does have a lieutenant universal you could use a science a Vulcan Dekir this one's actually better than it used to be they've kind of beefed this one up a little bit it has a commander science station, so fully equipped for science abilities, and then a lieutenant science. Ooh. So that's nice. And uh, that's basically all you get there. You don't, you don't really get one at, well, you do get one at Vice Admiral. It's upper half you don't get one, but a Vice Admiral. A Vice Admiral, it looks like they're all Z store options here, or fleet ships. Long range science vessel retrofit, so the intrepid retrofit here, and look at the science stations on this thing. Lieutenant commander, a commander, and an instant science station, so really heavy on that. A nice upgrade, actually. Multi mission strategic explorer, these are really cool. You get these in the sea store, these are the uh, sea store ships. Um, I need to do more of these. There's the strategic, the surveillance, and reconnaissance. Which one is more sciencey? I think it's. That one has more consoles, but they all have a commander science station, I'm noticing. All of them have a commander science station, but some of these are heavier on science consoles, like this one, Surveillance Explorer, definitely. Uh, the Vesta, definitely higher on science consoles. This one's a little more balanced. This one's a little more not balanced. <laughs> So these are interesting ships to use, but Z-Store ships, so you have to spend Zen on them, obviously. But these are actually really good science ships when you hit Vice Admiral or level 50 or on to 60 or whatever. These are really good ships. These were put in later in the game, and uh, I haven't used these a lot. I need to honestly try these out more, but they can uh, be equipped with some pretty awesome stuff especially when we put all the three of the bonuses together they have you know they all have universal console slots but all those universal console slots can be put together and in, into a three-piece combination to make them even better um, I recommend looking at these if you're interested in spending some Zen and you and you're interested in a science ship that's like really good at in-game these would be considered that of course, then we get into fleet ships. There are fleet versions of each ship available as well. And uh, basically, you're okay to fly that at level 50 or 60 because that's that's going to be a... Well, fleet is, I guess, could be considered between a Tier 5 and Tier 5 U ship or something like that. Because they're not exactly Tier... They're not exactly Tier 6 ships. They're, 
lesser than a tier 6 ship, but they're better than a tier 5. And uh, I don't know how they honestly compare to a tier 5 U. Maybe in between a tier 5 and a tier 5 U kind of, shi kind of ship. Until we get fleet tier 6 ships, that is. But as you can see, there's fleet versions of each ship. So, you know, you could do that. And then, of course, we have even more Z-Store ships. We have the Dyson ships that were released. The Reconnaissance, the Science Destroyer. This is probably the one you'd fly if you were the Science Destroyer. Um, it's got Commander Rank Science Ability when Tactical Mode is active. These are really weird because it's like a hybrid ship. Honestly, I did a review on this ship. I didn't like it so much. Um... Especially because that that science commander science station mode is only available when it's in a certain mode of the ship. It's like one mode of the ship you have a commander tactical station, one mode of the ship you have a commander science station. But it's really confusing, and you can never have both at the same time. So, really, it's it's either only a commander tactical or a commander engineering or a commander science ship. Anyway, it's just really strange. I don't know. I just didn't feel like it was my type of thing. The design is funky too. I mean, I love the texturing and the coloring, but uh, the design of the ship just um, doesn't appeal to me either. They're weird ships. Now we come to the fun tier 6 stuff, which for some reason is showing up under Vice Admiral. But uh, we have tier 6 ships. This is a new one, the Scryer or Screer, probably Scryer. And uh, I haven't flown it yet. Definitely want to get my hands on it to try it. But as you can see, also definitely built for Science Commander, Intelligence Science Station, and Lieutenant Commander Science Station. It's also got a Lieutenant Commander Engineering, so that's pretty nice. And then only a, t and a Lieutenant Tactical, so I would probably use that Ensign Universal for another tactical ability. Experimental, these are Z-Store ships, obviously. Z-Store here, we have Experimental Science Vessel. This is the, um, oh, what was that called? It was the, um, I forgot the name of it, Dauntless, yes, Dauntless. It's very heavy on science, too. Five science consoles, Commander Psy, Lieutenant Psy. Don't know how it does, haven't flown it yet. The new long-range science vessel, Tier 6, basically it's like the Intrepid, but an Intrepid Tier 6 is what this is. And I haven't flown this one yet either. It's got the secondary deflector. I haven't flown it, but I definitely want to try it. I think the design is kind of weird. I don't like the arched down the cells like that. I think they should be arched up, in my opinion, but anyway definitely all science here lieutenant commander science and commander science to uh, one lieutenant universal it's got one lieutenant engineering and tactical interesting i'd like to get my hands on that but again a z store ship so i have to spend money fleet ships of course we already kind of went over that every ship there's like a fleet ship version of that as well fleet fleet long range science fleet science fleet advanced and then etc so those are the kind of the, sh the ships you would find under the science. Now let's look at what we find under cruisers because I think this is probably the more common ship that people start the game with, especially this one right here you're probably familiar with, the Miranda. That's the starter ship. You have that uh, choice, you know, as your starter ship, basically. Well, you start with the Miranda, but then you have... Then you can go the science or escort when you get to... Um, here at, at uh, Lieutenant and Lieutenant Commander Miranda pretty basic ship just like that science ship it's equally equally balanced on all your bridge officers I mean it's just a starter ship so there's nothing really fancy here it doesn't really swing one way or another except that the base hull is probably higher no actually the base hull on that is the same too I'm actually really surprised by that so I guess these starter ships are actually really similar because our bridge officer layout's the same. This has two science consoles, and this just does not. This just has one. This has one science, one tactical, one engineering. Okay. Well, anyway, this is going to be your starter ship. So you know you're gonna you're gonna get used to that, and you're gonna be happy when you can get away from that. <laughs> there, there is also a Z store ship. You can fly the classic Constitution. 
so that's really nice I have flown this ship it's pretty balanced on the bridge officers nothing special there but it does have two engineering consoles so you can make it a little more beefy if you wanted but it's a cru standard cruiser it's kind of it does have a higher hull strength 12,000 so it's a pretty nice cruiser um, obviously though it's just a starter starter ship level so you're not gonna find you know a fleet version and T6 version of this even though people want them which really wouldn't make much sense but anyway lieutenant commander this is uh, obviously the Enterprise what would be the Enterprise A the refit cruiser is really nice I flew this one a lot um, or pretty much every character I, I leveled up there's a refit version of it even nicer but as you can see, it's starting now to get into Lieutenant Engineering Station and then Instant Engineering, so it's starting to lean toward the engineering character on this ship. The refit of it is really nice. I gotta say, I love the design of that. I definitely have this ship and have flown it. When we get into Commander, we get into the heavy cruisers, Cheyenne, the Stargazer, which um, I guess that's the Stargazer design, but for some reason it doesn't look like it does it but I guess it is um, but this is just a more beefy cruiser the one I flew was the advanced well not the advanced I flew the the heavy cruiser actually I thought there was a non sea store version of this you were able to get this as part of the game did they not allow that anymore I'm not sure let me know because um, when I was leveling up my character I know I chose this ship no, maybe it is only been Z Store. Maybe I purchased it and I. One of those early purchases that I did that I just forgot was a purchase. But I did fly this ship a lot and I really enjoyed it. And in fact, I got the retrofit, is what I did at Endgame, and I flew that for a very long time. Basically, this is the Enterprise B. Um, starting to get here, we got Lieutenant Commander Engineering and then Lieutenant Engineering. But the retrofit's even better. That's what I flew for a long time. I gotta say, I really enjoyed that ship. You got a heavy cruiser refit as well. I never really messed with the heavy cruiser too much. Well, I guess I did. I did as I leveled up because I guess I wouldn't have the Z store ship or the C store ship at first, so I started with that. But then eventually I changed over to this when this came out. I guess it's hard to remember. It's been so long. But commander ships, I guess you're really not going to have much option there. Just the heavy cruiser, unless you want to purchase the the, the sea store version there of the advanced heavy cruiser, which I recommend. It's actually a really nice ship. Captain, of course, you've got your classic Enterprise D, so you can kind of see the cruisers kind of go through the ranks of the Enterprise there: A, B, C, or, uh, Constitution, and then A, B, and D. And uh, you can actually get the C through a mission reward. So now we have our Commander Engineering Station and Lieutenant Engineering. So this is at Captain level. You get that. So pretty much standard exploration cruiser. There's a refit here, which is even better, and I really like the design of that. Come to Rear Admiral Lower Half, and this is now the Enterprise E, the Assault Cruiser. Really nice here. We've got Lieutenant Commander Engineering and Commander Engineering. This is a nice ship to fly if you're uh, you know, really into cruisers and stuff. I think this ship probably didn't get enough screen time in the movies. I mean, it was um, obviously it was a big part of the, all the movies after First Contact, but in First Contact it was kind of like assimilated. But I think that it kind of got the bad end of the stick a bit in this game because apparently it's dis it has been, you know, it was disappeared. Data was the captain, and uh, they, it, it's just everybody is vanished. And the ship never really got a resolution. And instead, they just skipped around right to the Enterprise F, which I, I don't know. I think this, this ship should have got a little more, little more light in the limelight. <laughs> a little more time in the limelight. How's that? Just needed a little bit more, I think. It, uh, I think it was an awesome ship. Star Cruiser. This one is kind of like a whale in space. Uh, pretty much, that's about the only way I can explain it. It's a whale in space. It is a Lieutenant Commander Engineering and a Commander Engineering. It has some cool designs. I think that's a nice design. The Sentinel there. Vanguard. It's a little lengthy. 
but not too bad. I think the Sentinel's probably the best one, personally. But it's um, an interesting ship. And then, of course, you've got the Advanced Heavy Cruiser Retrofit. This is the one that I flew for a very long time. Commander Engineering, Lieutenant Engineering, Ensign Engineering, and even Lieutenant a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, which allows it to have some pretty cool tactical abilities. So I, I've enjoyed this ship quite a bit. And uh, let's see, now we come to Vice Admiral ships. Of course, these are Z Store. You've got the Exploration Cruiser Retrofit, Dreadnought Cruiser, or Galaxy X. I've definitely flown this one a lot, especially on Ensign Ricky. He's got uh, this ship Commander Engineering Station, Lieutenant Commander Engineering. I really enjoyed this ship with all the bonuses you can put on it. This has turned out to be a really nice ship, actually. And it is upgradable to Tier 5U, so it's been a nice ship. You've got the Odyssey. Three Odysseys, actually. You have Odyssey Operations, which is more of your commander or engineering type ship. See, this is this th these kinds of ships gives you an idea of how ships can be more... Um, can align better with different careers. For example, the Odyssey Operations is meant for an engineering character because they put on it and a commander engineering and then look, one, two, three, four, five engineering consoles. Less of science and even less of tactical. But then there is a tactical version that has a little more tactical. And then there's a science version that has a little more science. So you see each little ship is kind of tailored also to the type of career. So it's like you were going to fly the Odyssey Operations, you wouldn't necessarily put this on a tactical character. If you were going to do that, you would go with the Odyssey Tactical one. But I mean, you could. You could. You don't have to do that. You could put anything on anyone you want. The Odyssey, that's basically, that's your Enterprise F, you know, the new, the new Enterprise. So they have three different versions of that for you to get. And there's a three-piece bundle put together on them uh, I mean there is you can get it in a bundle but there's also a, a, a three-piece set that you can get if you have all three ships you put all universal consoles on one ship and you will get even more bonuses and stuff from that you have the assault cruiser refit I have this ship I've flown this a lot I really think that's that's a nice in-game ship to fly as well I mean, if you're going to have an in-game ship, though, you definitely want to make sure you get the refit version, especially with the new Delta Alliance content. Fleet Heavy Cruiser Retrofit, or Refit, or no, Retrofit. Heavy Cruiser, Heavy Cruiser Retrofit, Fleet Heavy Cruiser Retrofit, Fleet Star Cruiser. Of course, you got fleet versions of each of these ships, too. There's the Ambassador. So that's the C. You've got the Fleet Support Cruiser Retrofit. And uh, battle cruiser here. This is a. This is really nice. This is the um, the Avenger, and uh, I definitely recommend this if you are looking at a sea store ship, and you kind of want a ship that does it all. It's probably going to be the Avenger. So let's say you're a tactical character, engineering, even science, and you just want a do all everything ship that's very versatile, and you want to spend some zen. I think you will like the Avenger. The Avenger is kind of like that as you can see very light on science but it is very heavy on both engineering and tactical so I mean a really good engineering and tactical ship both of them actually it's um, I've enjoyed this ship I really haven't used it enough to be honest with you but it's a really cool ship and it can use cannons so here's a ship you can have on a on an engineering character and use cannons so yeah, those do exist, and the Avenger is one of them. Very cool looking ship. I like it. I like the way it looks. There's also the fleet version of it, which is I think even really neat looking, especially that skin on it. And uh, yeah, I recommend that ship if you can get it. Fleet Dreadnought. Um, then we start coming into the tier six stuff. The Eclipse Intel Cruiser. I haven't flown that yet, obviously. I need to get into that. The Guardian, really looking forward to this one. Really want to get that one bad. And now we come to escorts, starting at Lieutenant. Your very first light escort. Now, you're not going to have this show up because this is a Z-Store a ship that I have purchased. This is the NX-01. 
So you can choose to fly the Miranda at start or initial. Once you get into the game, you could change ships if you bought this in the Z store, and you could fly the NX01. So this is the you know Enterprise, original Enterprise, I guess, and um, pretty balanced on stations. But it's got two tactical. It fires cannons, so there's your cannon cannon ship. Lieutenant Commander, this is basically your little bitty starter escort here, the Saber. I mean, it's nothing. It's really nothing. Um, it's going to take a lot of damage, although the base hole is 15,000, I'm surprised. But still, yeah, it does have Lieutenant Tactical and Ensign Tactical. There's also a refit of it, which I guess would be better if you're flying, you know, want to fly a better ship at that rank. Obviously, this is not an in-game ship. This is just, you know, during during that first 10 to 20 levels, you know. Commander, this is where it starts getting fun. You've got your heavy escort, and uh, this ship is real nice. It's got Lieutenant Commander Tactical and Ensign Tactical. There's also a refit of it if you want to fly this, the Thunder Child. At that rank, I've definitely flown this. I really, really like this escort. This is nice as a commander ship. The Thunder Child was a lot of fun to fly. Very heavy, of course, on the tactical stuff. Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Lieutenant Tactical. Yeah, it's a fun ship. Captain, we get our Defiant or Tactical Escort. And uh, I think a lot of people will like this ship. It's got the, finally, you have a Commander Tactical Station and Lieutenant Tactical Station. There's a refit version of it that's also really nice. Recommend it. I think the refit has... I don't know if the refit has uh, it's the Sao Paulo. I don't know if it has a cloak or not. But it is fun. And I have this one too. See, we come to Rear Admiral Lower Half, Advanced Escort Prometheus, basically. Um, I, this one is nice too. It has a lot of capability. Command, Lieutenant Commander and Commander Tactical Stations. A lot of commanders. It even has three science, sta uh, three science console stations and two science bridge officers. So you could, you know, put some stuff on here to heal yourself. So it can be really nice. You could put a lot of uh, shield generators, I guess, on in your consoles to really buff up your shield capacity if you needed. Patrol Escort. That's also a nice ship. I actually have the refit of this. I'm going to do a review on for the end game. But this has actually turned out to be a really nice ship as well that I like. See, we come to, well, let's do Vice Admiral. You have the Z-Store version or C-Store versions of these ships. You have Tactical Escort Retrofit, Multi-Vector Advanced Escort. And this does break up into three pieces, just like the, it says. It's the Multi-Vector Assault Mode. Heavy Escort Carrier. Uh, this one is actually really cool. This one has a hangar bay. I have actually flown, uh, talking about using different ships on different characters or different classes uh, or different careers, I used this ship, I have this ship, on my engineering character. And I have actually built an awesome build with this ship, the Armitage, on an engineering character, no less. So it can fire cannons and it has a hangar bay. And you know what? This really worked well on my engineering character. It helped me grind out a lot of stuff I was trying to grind out at the time. So, you know, putting different ships on different careers can actually be really nice. And this worked well on my engineer. It allowed me to get through the enemy faster because I was able to use cannons. I had a hangar bay. I, I kind of built a nice Romulan build with this, put all Romulan gear on it. It was really nice. You know, it worked out well. The Chimera... This is one of those special ships you only get if you're a 1,000 day veteran. Uh, but I, I do like this ship, so not everyone's going to have this one. But if you are lucky enough to have this ship, this is a fun ship to fly on either a tactical or an engineering character. This ship is a little more universal in that way, and it definitely has two, it has two universal slots. It, it leans a little more toward the tactical with those consoles, but you could fly it on an engineer just fine as well really fits well on either character. Fleet Escort Retrofit. The Aquarius. These are fleet versions here. Specialized ships, Z-Store ships, like the Andorian ships that are available. These are really nice. I kind of, I really like these. Which one do I fly? I think I fly the Kaizen. I think this is the one I fly. Could be wrong.
one of these that I fly. Obviously you can see this one's a little more heavy on tactical console slots. This one's got more science. This one has more engineering. Maybe it's the Charl. Maybe that's the one I fly. Yeah, because it's more balanced on engineering and tactical. So this is the one that I fly. And it has universal slot as well. And um, it is commander tactical, so you can have it. I have it on my tactical character, actually. He's the one that flies it. Definitely fit for that. Fleet Chimera, patrol escort refit. And we come to the tier 6 ships. Oops. We've got the Phantom Intel Escort. Kind of looks like a Defiant, a, a pancaked Defiant. <laughs> Flattened version of that. Haven't got it yet. Want it. We'll get it eventually and try it out. So those are the types of ships you can get. And again, you don't have to stick with being a purist. But if you do... I mean, I, maybe I'm just a Vulcan. To me, it just seems logical. <laughs> right? Obviously, there's, you know, Z store ships up the wazoo. So go in here and make sure to check. And now they finally have these organized by tier. So you can, you know, see what's in the Z store by tier, which is really nice. Tier 2, Tier 3, 4, 5, and 6 ships. So I like that. Now, obviously, this has just all been on the Federation side. As we go to different factions, the ships are going to be a little different. So let's just kind of quickly go over those. Where are you, my KDF character? Obviously, if you are a Romulan character and you've aligned with the Federation, all those Federation ships will be available to you. Now, as a Klingon... Those Federation ships will not be available to you. You have to choose the Klingon ships that are available. So let's do that. I'm just going to go to the shipyard and we'll look at that real quick. And then I'll also go to the Romulan side and we'll see what Romulan ships are available. So we go to the transporter pad. Beam to shipyard. Okay. So Klingons, their ships are not separated by career as such. You don't see science there. You don't see engineering. You don't see escort or tactical they are kind of different they filter them by raiders raptors battle cruisers and small craft think of battle cruisers more as maybe engineering raptors and raiders more as tactical or escorty ships there's not really science ships on the klingon side i mean there probably are some geared a little more towards science than others but klingons are not really known for their science ships so we'll just leave all the ships enabled right here. You've got the Burrell Bird of Prey when you start out, Lieutenant. Baroth Bird of Prey. The shuttle will turn off small craft. So that's all you have, basically. Burrell Bird of Prey and the, and the, or the Baroth Bird of Prey, which is the Z-Store ship. Very little choice there when you start out. Pretty much just like the Fed side. Whoa, excuse me. Just like the Fed side, very balanced on bridge officers and consoles. The Z-Store version adds another bridge officer station and two science. Oh, excuse me, that's a yawn. Lieutenant Commander. Coldun, Bird of Prey, Samra, Katanko, Katanko. I don't know as much about KDF ships and even Romulan ships as I should. I, I need to spend more time on the KDF side, I guess. I spent a lot of my time, most of it, on the Federation side. Z store ship here. Let's see which one did I? I stuck with the saw. I went with the Raptors when I was leveling my character. I went through the Raptors. So the starting out here with the Samra Raptor, and then going on from there. That's what I went with, and I really enjoyed those. Commander, yeah. I went, then I went with the Korg Raptor. Very nice Raptor at Commander. 
I find the Raptors a little more balanced. Maybe that's why I went with them. Although that's more heavy on tax tax consoles. Tinga. Z store versions. Ningteo. Scobe. Phalanx. All kinds of different alien ones here. At Captain Kating, the Patch Raptor, that's what I went with. At uh, Captain, really enjoyed that ship. Vorcha Battle Cruiser, of course. For, for Kang, Sea Store, though. Corsair, that's a different alien species. That's the Orions. Chitang, the Pujak. I flew that one, too. Because it is a refit. Is there? Yeah, it's a Patch Raptor refit. I enjoyed it anyway. We come down to Brigadier General, the Hegta. No, the Ken. The Ken is what I flew. Yeah, that was really nice at uh, Brigadier General. And as you look through these, you'll notice most of them are. I mean, they're really, really more focused on. That's all it has a commander universal. Wow, all of these are universal actually. Well that's nice. <laughs> Look at that. All of those are universal stations. That's really nice. Most of these though are definitely geared toward the tactical side. What I would like to do is to roll a science officer career on Klingon side and see what ships best fit a science career. Because I really don't know. There's not really science-heavy ships on the Klingon side, so I'd like to see if there are and what those are. And this one might be. Look at that, the Vokuv. That that definitely is sciency. Commander Science Station right there. So there you go, Brigadier General. Although I don't know how how good it is at other things, but Vorcha. Most of these you're just gonna find tactical heavy or engineering heavy. Obelisk. Um, a Lieutenant General, Garumba, Burrell, Carfi, Pegu, I enjoyed that ship a lot, yeah I flew that a lot, that's the 1000 day veteran ship, pretty much like the one on the Federation side, it's kinda got the same abilities, but it's nice, Bordeskew, there's a lot of ships here, but not as much as the Federation. The Kim Intel Battle Cruiser, the Matha. So they've only got two tier six ships, whereas Federation has three tier six ships. Klingons only have access to two tier six ships. So not really balanced there between Fed and Klingon, that's for sure. A little more confusing when you get onto the Klingon and Romulan side because most people are not familiar with those ships. They're probably more familiar with the Federation ships. So if you're new to the game or you're new to Star Trek Online, you don't know Star Trek Online that well, you might have a little more difficulty with the Klingon ships just figuring out what they are. However, configuring them could be potentially a little easier because it's pretty much one-sided. It's going to be either tactical or engineering heavy. So you just put a lot of cannon. All of them support cannons. So you just put cannons on it, fill them up on your tactical consoles, and go to town. Let's look at the Romulans real quick. Where are you? I haven't been on this character in ages. I need to work on him for sure. And I am Federation aligned on this Romulan, so that's why he's able to get and look at Federation ships at the same time as Romulan ships. So if you aligned with the KDF on your Romulan, then he would have access to KDF ships. So when we when we look here, we, we probably want to filter out escorts, cruisers, science vessels, small craft and just look at warbirds because that's really the only type of ship to filter Romulan ships. All they have are warbirds. That's it. They're just all called warbirds. So you've got the Talis light warbird. You've seen this in the Toss or the original Star Trek. You've got the Tavera, which is the sea store version upgrade of that basically, which is really cool looking. 
and uh, yeah, that's real nice. At uh, sin, but see, let's see. So yeah, it's balanced and bridge officers here. So that's your starter ship. This one has two tactical. You come to Centaurian, and we have the Delin Warbird and the Dahel Warbird, and I guess these are a little heavy on the science station. The the Delon, and this one is got has got a universal. In fact, three tactical consoles, two tactical consoles. Come to the sub commander version. We've got the Mogai. The Mogai is definitely your. Well, you know what? It looks like it's got two. It's got two science stations, but I was going to say it's a little more engineering heavy, but you know what? It doesn't look like that. It actually looks like it's a little more science heavy, doesn't it? But then it's got two tactical, but only one tactical bridge officer station. So, yeah, not too tactically inclined here. The Valdor is the refit, and it even has a universal station. You can make it more. Now, it does have three tactical consoles, though. So that's interesting, because it's only got one tactical bridge officer slot. Commander, now we've got the Dideridex. This one is definitely engineering oriented. I mean, you can just tell, right? Three engineering consoles, two engineering bridge officers. One of them is a commander engineering bridge officer. So this is definitely inclined more for the engineer. Definitely a more slow moving cruisery type of ship. Arkeef, this one is a, it's a little balanced, but it's weird. It's got one bridge officer here. But I guess maybe a little more tactical. These can use cannons, I think, so that's make, that makes these, yeah, the load cannons, that makes these a lot better, because they can do cannons. Um, the refit here, Drid, Driddow. This one's definitely more, more heavy on engineering, I mean, you can just tell that there. Arcala, maybe a little more tactical, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Commander, Sub Admiral 1, you got the, the Hapax. This is definitely more engineering. The Hanam, this is more science. This is the one I flew. It's definitely, it's got more science console slots and it's got Commander Science Station. See, it's harder to tell what's really geared for engineering, science, or tactical on KDF and Romulans because they don't classify their ships by that whereas Federation was classified by that you know science cruiser or escort but it's not like that on the Romulan or KDFs it's different so that's why it's a little confusing I think they could probably ease that confusion a little bit by how they categorize these ships or at least give us filters that that match for science cruiser and escort on KDF and Romulan would probably really help. Vice Admiral, you got Tverolite. These are the re the uh, retrofits, Z store retrofits. Delen, Mogai. There's not a lot of Romulan variety here either. You'll notice way more on Federation side. Not a lot on Romulan. You got fleet versions, of course, of each one. It's nice. You would want that. Now something the Romulan side does have, which is really beneficial and a lot of people love, are the scimitars. You've got the, the Falchion Dreadnought, the Toll War, and the Scimitar. These ships are powerful, powerful, powerful Romulan ships. And uh, the, this one's pretty heavy on the science consoles, but only one bridge officer. But it does have two universals, so you can make it swing any way you want, really. But it is Commander Tactical, so think of it probably more for a tactical officer. The Toll War is definitely more sciency. Look at that. More wait, look at all those science consoles it has. And it's Lieutenant Science, but still Commander Tactical Station. I think all of them are Commander Tactical Station. And then the Scimitar, yeah, Commander Tactical, but a little more heavy on tactical consoles. So they, they can play different roles and do different things, but each one's still gonna have a commander tactical. None of them are going to have a commander engineering or science station. Only a lieutenant commander, because that's universal. Some more interesting ships too. Um, scimitars, you've got, you got this is again that 1,000 day veteran ship, the uh, uh, Deo, Deonus, Deonus Warbird. I haven't flown it, but 
Looks like it could be a lot of fun. I really like the way it looks. The fleet version of that. Tier 6 ships. The... I don't know how you pronounce that. Fayette. Intel Warbird Tier 6. I really like the profile of it. Really nice ship. Really heavy on tactical there. Commander Tactical Station and Intelligence Officer Station. And then the Alal Warbird Battle Cruiser, kind of like a Dadaradex but squished. <laughs> Definitely more engineering though. Commander Engineering, Commander, Lieutenant Commander, or Lieutenant Engineering Station. But again, only two of them, whereas Federation has three Tier 6 ships. Romulans only get two, so KDF and Romulan, a little stimp there on uh, what's available. So yeah, if when you look at all of the species, really, the Federate or all of the different, yeah, species here, are, are not species, factions. Yeah, the Federation really has the most ships, and that's what I was saying in the very beginning video. They really get the most attention, the uh, Federations, those darn Federations. They get the most ships. Whenever a ship is released, it's usually they get two and the other factions only get one. And such is the same for the tier 6 ships. I mean, the Federation got three, and KDF and Romulan, they only get two. So it's a little, it's a shame that, you know, they don't focus enough on, I'd say, the Romulan and KDF side. I think if they focused equally as they do on the Federation side of the Romulans and, and KDF, that more people would play those factions. So, you know, they say it's the chicken and the egg. They want you guys to play it first before they put that content out there but I think they need to provide that content before we go play it I think it needs to be there so that you know people can choose to go play those things but things are a lot better now than they ever used to be anyway that's just an overview of the ships I mean there's so much I could have talked about with ships so much more in depth you know we could have really got there with the ships I just wanted to give basically new players here or people reading this guide or if you're you know just leveling your first character in Star Trek Online an idea of what ships are available as you level excuse me as you level up through the game that way you'll kinda know maybe where you want to go with your character and what type of ship you want to fly again you can fly any ship on any career that's one great benefit about the game uh, I just feel that if you put the right ship in the right career it can really fit well you know science ship to science character cruiser to engineer tactical but it doesn't always work that way for example the armitage i've flown on my engineering character and i loved it i absolutely loved it it worked out really well so you can do that no no problems at all doing that just however you want to play the game and i always emphasize that on everything it's all about how you want to play the game as long as you are having fun and it's entertainment for you which remember everybody the goal and point of this game is just to be entertainment so as long as you are being entertained and having fun don't let anybody tell you that you are doing the wrong thing by having the wrong ship on the wrong character or whatever no if you're having fun if that's what you want to fly you can make it work in this game just all a matter of how you build each ship now for for each build exam you know I'm I, there's no way I can go over each ship and what each you know each build works best on each ship absolutely no way I could do that so you will have to just watch my ship reviews which I have a ton of already I've done a lot of ship reviews in the past and I'll be doing more in the future so watch those videos to learn about what builds work best on each ship because as I go over and review each ship I talk about the different kind of builds you can put on that ship so that's where that information will be there's no way I could make a video going over every type of ship and what build works best I can't even remember all the ships so that's just impossible to do so look toward those ship reviews for that information all right, the next thing I want to do is just kind of summarize this whole experience of looking at each career. And uh, I want to show you some kit options that are available to you. Let's go back to the doctor because I have been playing with kits real recently, customizable kits, and gotten a lot better at uh, finding out where these kits are and making some really good choices. But 
a new science kit that I just put on this character is the Spire Prototype Science Kit. And you'll see it increases my weapon proficiency, personal shield generator, scientist, and particle physics. And you got to look specifically at what powers you want you are going to be using or what modules and that will determine which type of thing you want buffed here. For example, scientist is going to help dampening field, nanoprobe infestation, and tricorder scan. Well, those are things that I use. I use tricorder scan, I use dampening field, and I use the nanoprobe infestation. And then particle physics. This is going to help um, exothermic induction field and sonic pulse. I use the sonic pulse and I use the exothermic induction field a lot. So this is where I wanted my points to be in was particle physics because that's going to help the ability that I'm using most which is the exothermic induction field. And that's just based on the modules I've put in here. I've got, there's the exothermic induction field I'm using. It's a Mark 13 rare. I'm also using research kit module neutronic radiation. This is from the Delta Rising or Delta Alliance reputation. I'm using the Sonic Pulse. This is from the Spire. And I'm using the Medical Module also from the Spire. And then I put on the Elachi Kit Module, Subspace Rift, from the last mission that in Delta Alliance, or the, yeah, the Delta Alliance that gave us the that reward, basically. And you'll see it here. So it's a very cool feature. And um, basically, it's just like your, just like we were talking about how you need to determine what powers you want to use before you add your skill points. Well, same thing with a kit. You want to decide what modules you're going to use before you decide on your kit frame. Because you want to get a kit frame that helps those modules or boosts those modules. So the plus 26.2 to scientist and the plus 26.2 to particle physics are helping my modules specifically the sonic pulse, the exothermic induction field, and uh, and then the other stuff native to a science career, which is tricorder scan, dampening field, and nanoprobes. So that's actually helping my abilities, but I had to determine what powers I wanted first before I could decide what kit I want, because here's another science kit, for example. Here, this is called a Romulan's science kit, but you can see that it has plus 26.2 to scientist and probability logistics. Now probability logistics is not something I'm really using. I am using the electrogravatic field, but I'm not using anesthesine gas, stasis field, neural neutralizer, or tachyon harmonic. So this was less useful to, for me. I could have used electrogravatic field. Actually, I'm not using electrogravatic field. I was using it before, so I'm not even using that now. So really the other kit I'm using is better suited for my character because that's the powers I'm using. But there's other kits too. There's um, this one here is a counter command kit. It really does nothing for science except just willpower. This is a Delta Expedition science kit. Now it does willpower and adds critical severity, but it does it adds to physiology. Problem is if I'm not using any of those powers, Melorazine, Dialavine, or Biofilter Sweep, then it's useless to me because I'm not using any of those powers so the physiology has no effect. So that that won't, for the powers I'm using, that doesn't make sense. So you just have to determine what powers you're using and then or what modules you want to use and then you get a kit frame that fits that the best. And this one's going to increase my weapon proficiency and my shield generator so my shield strength is actually higher with this kit frame. But what I want to show you is where a place places where you can get these frames, these kit frames, and these some of these abilities as well, because they are they're they're out there, and I didn't really know all of these. I knew these places existed. I didn't know the kits there existed until I really went and looked for them. And I'm kind of dumb because I should have done that a long time ago. But <laughs> I just now like recently looked to see what's available because I really hadn't got into customizable kits until recently. I was just sticking with my baked-in kits, the kits that I had previously, which had worked fine, but now I'm finding you can do so much more with the customizable kits. So what I'm doing is I'm flying to New Romulus right now, and I'm going to go to the embassy, the fleet embassy. So you do need to be in a fleet to access these.
But we'll come to New Romulus, and once we beam down here, we'll go to the Embassy. Beam to Embassy, and we're actually going to go to the Shuttle Bay. That's right, the Shuttle Bay. You wouldn't think that that's where you would need to go, but that's where all the fancy stuff is. And right down here, we're going to take a left to this first console. And this is where you will find awesome kits for any career. You're going to find tactical, engineering, and science. So this is not just science kits. This is all career types. These are called Romulan kits, basically. You've got Romulan tactical kits, Romulan engineering kits, and Romulan science kits. Now you have level or version 10, Mark 10. You have Mark 11. And then, of course, you have Mark 12 versions of these kits. And that's going to cost you 42,000 fleet credit and 8,500 dilithium, but they're worth it because look what these do. The Romulan tactical kit has four assault module slots, one tactical module slot. It has plus 26.2 weapon proficiency, personal shield generators, so that's going to mean your weapon damage is better, and you're going to get more shield strength. And this one adds to grenades and combat specialist. So you look down here and you see the type of grenades it helps with. Photon, plasma, smoke, or stun grenade. And then combat specialist. This skill improves the damage for ranged weapons, melee weapons, and unarmed combat. This skill also improves your critical chance and critical damage with all attacks. So that is could be an important thing on a tactical character. So that could be a very useful kit for you. And then here is a Romulan engineering kit. This one is going to give you four fabrication modules, one engineering module. This one's going to help with weapon proficiency, personal shield, generators, turrets, and drones. This is probably the one that I will put on my character because he, this is going to help with phaser turrets, quantum mortars, support drones, seeker drones. It's also going to help with any type of shield generator, shield, medical, force field, or cover shield, so any type of generator. And at the same time, it's going to be improving my weapons and give me more shield strength. And that's just a kit frame, just a kit frame doing all that. So if you're using those, any of those abilities, which obviously on my engineering character you saw I am definitely using all those abilities, this kit is really, really, really going to benefit my engineering character. So that's this will probably be a good upgrade from what I've got now. Actually, I already have what I have is the Romulan one. It's just baked in. But this is the basically uh, customizable one. So I'll be able to put my own modules in it. The science kit we just went over. This one is the probability logistics one. But it's got two research modules, two medic uh, one science, it does uh, weapon proficiency, personal shield generator, extra to science and probability logistics. So, I mean, if you're using things like electric vertic field, anesthesine gas, stasis field, neural neutralizer, sonic pulse, tachyon, harmonic, then this kit frame is going to help you. But that's not all that this offers. This also offers you some actual abilities or modules to put in your kits. This has an assault kit module plasma grenade. So here's a very, um, more than very rare, ultra rare assault kit module plasma grenade, Mark 12. Gonna do 272 kinetic damage. So it's just a much better plasma grenade. So if you want a really good plasma grenade on your tactical character, well, here, here you go. Here's an, a, here's a, uh, an ultra rare plasma grenade. I mean, this is just one step behind Epic, her gold quality. So this is a really high-end, high-quality plasma grenade. And then you have, for engineers, beam turret, Mark 12, uh, ultra rare as well. This creates a level 60 flamethrower turret. So this is what I was talking about on my engineering character. I, was, I, was, I said, well, you know what? If there is a flamethrower module, then I'll go with a customizable kit. Well, guess what? I just found one. <laughs> it's right here. It exists. I didn't know that, but now I do. So here is my level 60 flamethrower turret that it does phaser damage, but also is a flamethrower that I can put in a customizable engineering kit right here. And this is uh, ultra rare, or yeah, ultra rare. It's not very rare, it's ultra rare. It's one up from ultra, from very. 
and it's Mark 12. It's very good quality. All I gotta have is the fleet credits and dilithium for it, and I can have this really nice uh, module there in my on my engineering character. So that is something I'm going to definitely do on my engineering character is customize his kit now that I know I can get that module. And then for science, here's stasis field. This is just a fragile hold. This one I don't find too useful. It's just a fragile hold because the enemy is going to break that hold real easy. So I, I probably would bypass this one. And in fact, I did bypass this. But the uh, kit frame is definitely useful. And th these other modules for tactical and engineering, very useful. So the fleet embassy, come here for some good kit modules and some good kits, kit frames. But it doesn't end there. Oh, no. It doesn't. We cannot transwarp, so we'll have to take the old-fashioned way. Fleet Spire is where I want to go to. And uh, the Fleet Spire also has some good kit frames and modules. So again, yeah, these require you to be in a fleet, or to have access to a fleet. But if you have the fleet credits and dilithium for them, you have access to some really nice kit frames and kit modules. Now, something about these modules and kit frames, they are not upgradable. You cannot right-click and click upgrade on them. So there are no, are no upgrades. So you get what you get. Let's go to Solene Sphere. So you get what you get with these. You, you can get the, uh, you know, ultra rare Mark 12, but that's as high as it's going to go. That's like the highest quality you can get. So we come right over here to this person, and as you can see, a whole bunch of kit stuff. You've got Spire Prototype Engineering, Spire Prototype Engineering, you got, of course, Mark 11, Mark 12, Spire Experimental Engineering, Science, and uh, Tactical is down here. So a lot of different of possible options here as well for the kit frame and module. Let's start with Mark 12 because that's what we'll look at. We've got the prototype engineering Mark 12. So this is going to do weapon proficiency, personal shield generator. This one's going to help generators. This one's going to help modification specialists. So that's quick fix, engineering proficiency, equipment diagnostic, weapon malfunction, or fuse armor. So if you use any of those abilities, you want to come here and look at the Spire prototype engineering one. You've also got experimental engineering, which is going to be to demolitions and repairs. Chroniton mine barrier, transphasic bomb, orbital strike, shield recharge, reroute power dust shields, quick fix engineering proficiency. So that's totally different. And uh, then you have the science versions. You have Prototype, Spire Prototype Science, that's going to be the Scientist in Particle Physics, which we went over. And then the other one is Experimental Science, we also went over, which is to Medic and Physiology. Then you have Tactical, which is going to be to Combat Specialist and Advanced Tactics, Suppressing Fire, Fire on my Mark Overwatch. And finally, Prototype Tactical, which is Special Forces, Target Optics, Ambush, Stealth Module, and Squad Command, which is Motion Accelerator, Rally Cry, Strike Team, Tactical Initiative, Battle Strategies, Overwatch, Security Escort, even. Wow, look at that. So, really, you just have to determine what powers you want buffed and what you want to use, but so many available different kit frames here. And then kit powers, too. You've got um, a Shield Generator, Mark 12, for your engineering character. That's Fabrication. You have Chroniton Mind Barrier, Mark 12. You have, for science, Sonic Pulse, Mark 12. 
You have, and these are all ultra rare. You have, of course, medical tricorder, Mark 12. I'm using that one. And you have lunge, Mark 12. And then rally cry, Mark 12. I am using this one on my tech. This is rally cry. This is where I got my rally cry from. And this is ultra rare, you know, ultra rare Mark 12. So these are some awesome things, modules you can put in your kit frames. So I really just wanted to go over that because that's a lot of information there, but there's a lot you can do with kits and kit frames that give you some customization to your character and really allow you to make a really nice character doing whatever kind of powers you want. Just remember, you've got to put those those modules in your kit frame and actually, you know, hit P then afterward and drag those powers into your hotbar and then you'll have them, but they're very useful. I mean, you want those things. And so for my character, for example, I'm using that that Spire prototype science kit frame and that's helping scientist particle physics, also weapon proficiency shield generator. And uh, and then I'm able to use the modules that I want to use. And for my engineering, I'm probably going to go with that Romulan kit, which is pretty similar to what I have, but then I can customize the modules in it and use some more interesting modules like the uh, new Neutronic Mortar from Delta Rising. I really want to try that Neutronic Mortar out. So I'm going to use that, and I can do that with, the custom, with that customizable kit. And I, again, I'm already using a one on the tactical character, but I could probably see if my kit frame is, is is best utilized. It's probably not right now. I could probably change out kit frames on that character. So each career definitely has unique kit frames and unique modules. So that'll really, really make a difference on your character. So make sure to set those right. And now you kind of have an idea of what's available. And you can, of course, go to the exchange to find out what modules there are. If you can't afford any of these from the embassy or or spire you can search by going to kit modules and then search the type of module you're looking for for example medic or research so if i was looking for research modules i just type in research and there's all the research modules that come in you can search by by rarity and uh you know what level you want so that would be all mark 11 rares and up and it would show me what's available as far as uh, kit modules are available in those in that way so do that make sure that you select all that see what else I really can't think of anything else I think we've like covered everything there is to cover as far as career types and yeah you know, all that stuff I mean I can't think of anything there's probably a lot more we could though I mean really there's you could go into detail on so much of this stuff but my goal here with these videos has been to help people out there who are maybe new to the game or just playing or or you don't know what is available and how to do things necessarily now you kind of have an idea of what the different is offered in the different career types so you can decide what type of career you want to play and then what you can do under that career how you can set your ground powers and your space powers and uh, just utilize all of that because it will really you can really customize a character well on in this game just depending on how you want to set all that up so I hope this series has been beneficial to somebody out there that's my goal that's all. <laughs> well, at this point, I'm going to sign off, and uh, all I can say is stay tuned for the next one. There will be lots, lots more stuff coming up. Thanks for watching.